In the continuous effort to paint the president as a communist, a Marxist, a socialist, a plagiarist, whatever, the right is now championing a fabricated term conveniently channeling imperialist Russia. The latest right-wing anti-Obama meme, the war on czars. You know, the drug czar, the car czar. Of course, Republicans don't seem to know there aren't actually any czars in the American government. The term here is used as an invention of a lazy news media that prefers drug czar to the job's real title, Director of National Drug Policy Control. Dr Director of National Drug Control Policy. See, that's why they prefer drugs are. A lot easier. In our third story on the countdown, Republicans are now leading the charge against the Obama administration's appointment of policy advisors. The same kind of policy advisors every administration has had. The right wing's war on imaginary czars, high-level policy advisors who do not face Senate confirmation, has led, has, has, has led Republican Congressman Jack Kingston of Georgia to introduce legislation barring any presidential advisor unconfirmed by the Senate from joining the federal payroll. Mr. Kingston, joined by a veritable anti-Czar chorus, among them Senator Susan Collins, along with five other GOP senators, firing off a letter to the president singling out 18 advisory posts that may, quote, may be undermining the constitutional oversight responsibilities of Congress, end quote. Senator Collins, of course, neglecting to identify which specific positions she has issues with. And in a recent op-ed, Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson claiming an unprecedented number of czar posts in the Obama administration, even though she has supported the same advisory positions in the past. The White House hitting back, calling the self-appointed Czar in the war on czars, Glenn Beck, and other GOP lawma lawmakers with a post on its website. Although some members have asked serious questions about the makeup of the White House staff, the bulk of the noise you hear began first with partisan commentators suggesting that this is somehow a new and sinister development that threatens our democracy. Meanwhile, the DNC doing some further truth squatting with a new web video dancing with the czars, showing Beck rattling off a list of appointees, except the pictures shown next to Beck aren't czars from the Obama administration. They're actually from the Bush administration. How many does that make now? We decided to count them up. There's the drug czar, then there's the intelligence czar, the economic czar, border czar, homeland security terrorism czar, the regulatory czar, technology czar, the car czar, and now the cyber czar. We begin in D.C., where Republicans fighting against the reprimand of Congressman Joe Wilson for screaming, you lie, at the president, insisted that they did not want to spend time on that reprimand because they had better things to do. Well, today we learned what it was they were so eager to spend their time on instead of censuring Mr. Wilson. As you can see, we have a team effort to get a handle on this issue of the czars. What I've filed is H.R. 3569, which is called the SAC Act. This bill would sunset all czars effective December 31st of this year. The SAC Act. Get it? Sunset all czars. SAC the czars. Genius. That's what Republicans have been working on. More surprising than a midday press conference called to address the czar epidemic that Republicans have just noticed has struck the country was perhaps the reaction that this Republican attack elicited from the White House today. I think it's been somewhat remarkable that uh, in previous administrations, uh, a so-called criticism of this uh, has been a bit deafening. Uh, the silence has been deafening. Uh, only to have it come around as a political issue now. I've noticed that uh, uh, you, you've read Senator Bennett was pushing for a Y2K czar that he didn't think was powerful enough. Uh, you've seen Lamar Alexander call for a manufacturing czar. Uh, so, you know, I, you know, somebody referred to in the Bush administration as the abstinent czar. Uh, 
that mention of the abstinent czar there was uh, a reference to a gentleman named Randall Tobias, who was also known as President Bush's aid czar. As aid czar, Randall Tobias insisted that countries who wanted any of the America's AIDS funding had to promote abstinence and denounce prostitution. That turned out to be very awkward when Randall Tobias's name turned up on the D.C. madam's phone list. The press secretary also singled out Republican Senators Lamar Alexander and Bob Bennett in his rejoinder today. Back in 2003, when President Bush was the one appointing czars, this was Lamar Alexander's stance then. The President of the United States yesterday in a Labor Day speech in Ohio talked about, talked about jobs and specifically manufacturing jobs. He talked about appointing a, a sort of manufacturing job czar in the Commerce Department, which I would welcome. Which I would welcome. Manufacturing czar, sure, sounds great. But now that President Obama is the one appointing the czars. These czars are an affront to the Constitution. They're anti-democratic. They are poor, a poor example of a new era of transparency, which is what was promised to this country. Senator Lamar Alexander. As for Senator Bennett, well, he's just written a letter to the Obama White House complaining about the proliferation of czars in your administration. If you go to Senator Bennett's website at this very moment, you will see that one of the things on his brag list of his accomplishments in the Senate is, quote, successfully urged President Clinton to appoint a year 2000 czar. Yeah, but that was for Y2K. That was huge. That totally needed a czar.